On today's show, we're getting all the details on DC's new partnership with Hanna-Barbera from Dan the Dio. Plus, we're gearing up for the debut of Killer Frost and Death Storm on The Flash. So get ready for DC All Access. Hey guys, I'm Tiffany Smith. And I'm Jason Inman. It's time to run down the list of the latest DC news. Green Lantern Corps Edge of Oblivion follows the Emerald Space Police as they struggle to find a way home from an alternate universe. Writer Tom Taylor is here to provide some color commentary on the new series. So at the beginning, they light a beacon to bring their friends to them, and something else comes to them. And it's the last beings who've survived to the end of this universe. And of course, the, the last people who've survived something like that aren't always the good guys, the last person standing. Some of them are, some of them aren't, but essentially, not only have we got all of this peril and this universe closing in and tearing around them, but we also have people that we have to rescue and decide whether they're gonna bring them with them. Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is the perfect millennial crossover that has been delighting fans and critics alike. The Turtles found their way into the Batcave at the end of issue number two, and tomorrow's third installment features Batman's first run-in with the Shredder. Grab your copy to see how the Dark Knight handles the heroes in a half shell. On the Vertigo side of things, a new horror series premieres this week called The Dark and Bloody. The story stars an Iraq war veteran who has to illegally peddle moonshine to support his family. But his combat days are coming back to haunt him in the form of a deadly threat. Pick up your copy of issue one to travel deep into the creepy backwoods of Kentucky. In honor of Valentine's Day, DC Collectibles is offering up a brand new statue featuring one of DC's hottest couples, Green Arrow and Black Canary. Based on the art of fan favorite Cliff Chang, the statue is the perfect gift to snag yourself a special someone on the most romantic day of the year. In TV news, on tonight's brand new episode of The Flash, we see Barry make his maiden voyage to Earth 2. Once there, Barry runs into a slew of Earth 2 doppelgangers, and we'll get our first looks at Killer Frost and Deathstorm. Plus, The Flash is paying a visit to National City on March 28th to team up with Supergirl in a special episode titled World's Finest. Let the crossover speculation begin. DC and Hanna-Barbera are teaming up to turn some of your favorite cartoon characters into comic book heroes. For today's featured story, we've got DC co-publisher Dan DeDio to talk about the inspiration behind the Titanic team-up. This is really exciting for me. I mean, you got to understand, my background was in animation before joining DC, and the reason why I got into animation were these characters. First up is Future Quest, and Future Quest is not just Johnny Quest, but it really deals with all of the the Hannibal Barbera action heroes. So you see a group of characters in here, including the Herculoid, Space Ghost, Birdman. We have the Impossibles, Galaxy Trio, Slight Reinvention on Frankenstein Jr., um, and Mitor, Slight Reinvention on Mitor too. So a lot of fun stuff that's gonna happen with that book. What we did is we did an interesting uh, Wacky Races Mad Max mashup in, in Wacky Raceland, and we actually got the designer, for, um, a guy by the name of Mark Sexton, who was a designer on the Mad Max movies. Oh, okay. uh, and he actually did some of the redesigns of the Wacky Racer cars, so the, he brought a real sense of personality to them. Um, over here, we've got uh, the Flintstones is coming, and uh, we looked at what um, Archie did, mm -hmm. we had Archie Comics, and mm -hmm. they did some really re interesting reinventions uh, with Archie. And we looked at our own characters that people have such a long, deep understanding of, and we wanted to find a way to reinvent them too. So that's what you're seeing here. And I think these characters are relevant in regardless of the fact that they're setting the Stone yeah. Age. So there's, there's wonderful storytelling here, and Amanda kind of did a beautiful art on the design. But the one that's the heart of it all, the really the fire that was kept this all going, it was Jim Lee's love of Scooby-Doo. Now, you have to understand, <laughs> those are two names you don't really expect to have in the same sentence. But Jim had this incredible fondness uh, of Scooby and the Scooby Gang. Uh, we had a concept in mind called the Scooby Apocalypse, and these are all these are Jim's designs. He has such passion for the characters. He's involved in the storytelling with Keith Giffen, so it's a great thing. Like I said, it's 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 A plus all the way through, and uh, I think the the fans are really going to be excited by it. And by the way, you, you know, you see down here, we're still doing uh, the Scooby Doo and the Scooby Doo team up books. We're still in that business. This isn't replacing it. This is an addition to it. Oh, okay. You know, which is really interesting. Some people were worried they were going to lose their favorite Scooby Doo. Furthest thing from the truth. This is really just showing how wide a reach these characters have. Right where we stand right now, the first ones out of the gate are gonna be Future Quest. 
and Scooby Apocalypse, they come out in May, and then the, the, the rest of the movie coming out later this year. DC isn't just about superheroes, but it's about all these other great things too. And I think Hanna Barbera is this wonderful, wonderful trove of characters that we can we can build on. And my hope is that these work so well that we can start to go Do into more, more characters. Yeah, we have a couple in mind. You know, in Jim's mind, he likes to see. He thinks this is all one cohesive universe, and he wants to see how this all can die from everything from, from a, creating a world that gets us from Flintstone suggestions through wacky races through Future Quest and uh, Scooby Doo. And and he has a weird idea that this is all one cohesive universe. And you know what? If, if anybody can pull something like that together, he's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very curious to see how Johnny Quest deals with the apocalypse. Yes, <laughs> I'm more interested in how Johnny Quest does with the Flintstones. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for now. But before we go, check out our panel of the week. Remember that Black Canary and Green Arrow statue from earlier in the show? Well, I'm still holding it, and you guys have a chance to win it. For your chance to win, make sure you click subscribe and let us know in the comments below your favorite panel or moment from last week's DC Comics. And be sure to include the phrase, my DCAA entry. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to let Oliver go. <laughs>